look at that. I've done it again. Wait a minute. Hang on. There you go. I made a mess. I've been listening to Pink Floyd. And it came through the speakers. And now you should be hearing me. I hope that is all good. G'day, CS. How are you? And audacious. Welcome to the workshop. This is an impromptu stream. I've got, I've got a mate next to me. Got Hello. him from rent a friend. Uh, and what we're going to do is um, some carving. Sure. Master wood carver, Gary Field. You got a website on it? I certainly have. Go check him out. Gary Field. Wood, w www.garyfieldwoodcarver.com. There you go. See, and we're going to do a whale's tail out of ebony because those of you who've been following me know that at the moment I'm going through an ebony and ambonia phase as well as a blacksmithing phase. So we're going to get into this very shortly. I've got to swap mics with um, Gary. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Welcome to the workshop, by the way. I'm Steve Hay. This is Woodworking Masterclass. And I know I've been remiss. I haven't been on for a week. I have been doing other things. But I'm going to expand what we're doing with Woodworking Masterclass and include some blacksmithing along the way. So I've got some interesting ideas coming along there. But this is, as I said, impromptu. Gary's turned up and said, let's do it. I'm good, CS. I'm good, me hearty. Thank you so much. It's, I'll tell you what we could do with a boat out here at the moment. It's starting to rain a bit. But luckily the rain has eased off and therefore we're not getting wet, which is good. But anyway, um, I'm going to hand over to Gary. I'll hand him over. Do you want to talk while you do this? Or oh, do you want to? Yeah. Oh, all right, hang on. Let me just get undressed. Um, not a lot. No, no, no. I'll end it this bit. Just those that are watching can see. Ah! Oh, it went all the way down. Oh, you're lucky. You're lucky it's not smell vision I tell you. Bob has got wet. Bob is on the Bob is on the nose. Stick that in your back pocket. And then run that up the inside of your shirt. You like Fiber inspect, hey from Texas, how you going? I'm gonna get close to Gary because he's got the mic now. Welcome to the workshop. We're gonna do a bit of carving in ebony. So now, what I'm going to do, I'll go all cams. So this is what, I'll control this if you like, but mm. I'm just explaining the setup of the studio. Now, that is all cams, which we've got those yep. three cams there, that one up there, yep. and this one. If you want a side view, you got that one. I'll just move that up so you can. Well, you can just move it. I, I can see what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. And then if you want to be talking, well, we see you in the corner there. And then we've got right and left, and left and right. And then the two cams together, which I think we'll change that one over there. So this is this is on the hop, people. Also technical. Um, okay, we can move that around. And I'll move that one so you can see the mice. And that can go there, which means this one can go there. Close up shot. Close up shot with you in shot. Or all cams. We'll, we'll go on that one, I think. Let's go. G'day, JB. How are you? Mate, yeah, I know, I'm sorry. No, I haven't been slack. I've been really busy doing stuff around the yard and what have you, but I'm hoping to get, I've got a heap of videos I've got to put up, especially I know I've promised members bloopers, so they'll be coming along. If you like what you've seen and you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. If you want to become a member of the Woodworking Masterclass channel and get extra videos and a bit of the inside stuff, hit the join button. And uh, what we're doing is building up a knowledge bank on the members uh, community board. So if you've got any questions, you remember, I do my best to do a video or get special guests in and I'll upload those to the video uh, to the members community board. But uh, this one I'm going to do is a separate video. So I don't know if we'll stream the entire thing, but the entire thing will be edited and loaded onto the YouTube channel soon. So what I'm going to do, it's doing great. Well, that's good. I'm going to go and hand everything over to Gary. Here we go. There you go. Okay. Now, do you want, are you happy with all those shots? Yeah, or do you yeah, just want that shot to start with to talk to people? No, I just don't want to start with you. Yeah. All right then. 
All right, so lovely piece of ebony here. Um, and I'm going to make a very simple whale tail. So it's uh, just a simple little project that you can do with very simple tools. You don't have to have uh, carving tools as such. Just basically cut the shape out roughly. I've drawn a whale tail on the piece of ebony. Cut the shape out roughly. So we can start to shape it. It finishes absolutely beautifully. So we'll just move it over. So So as you can see, if you can see it, uh, this way, um, there we go. we go, go this one. If you go, yeah, there we go. go. That one over. That one. You can pick it up and put it right in it. All right, there so there we, go. Ah, there we go, there we go, there we go. So we've got a little um, stub I'm gonna leave just on the end here, like that. So that can hold in the vise while we shape the tail. So in the end, we're gonna end up with a very nice little whale tail like so. So there we go. So this one, I've put a little hole in it and we can make a little pendant out of it. So unfortunately you can't see the pattern from the front, but I can see it here, which is the main thing. Don't have to be super accurate because that's going to come when we start to shape it. It's really beautiful ebony, it's nice and solid, good colour through it. Okay, so simple little shape and now we can start to do some shaping. I'm going to use a Dremel first, so I'll put on a mask, don't like breathing in too much dust, particularly ebony dust, and we'll get some shaping happening, but you don't have to use a Dremel, you could just use some files, some rasps, um, got a whole selection of them here that, you know, different grits ready to go. Normally I have this suspended from the ceiling in my workshop, but we'll just make do with it here. So what I'm going to do first is just shape the shape the tail itself, shape the um, the body. Yeah, it might be a good idea actually. So I'll actually take it out of the vise and just do it so you can see it. Yeah, I need to get to the switch so I can. There we go. Beautiful. All right, so I'll just round the tail over a bit here. So by leaving that little stub on the end there, you can keep hold of it. You can hold it with your fingers or put it in the vise. Now we'll make the tail itself, the flute, thinner. I usually have a little set of wooden jaws on the top which avoids damaging my sabre tooth bits. So we'll put them back in again.
try and keep the tail a bit symmetrical. I use a white pencil to draw on the ebony. Obviously, it's much easier to see, particularly when you get to Steve's age. Oh, and my age. Because yeah. <laughs> if you can remember where you put the pencil. Yeah. <laughs> I bought one the other day, I don't know. Good idea just to use it on everything. Ah, yeah, just a white coloured pencil's fine. So we'll flip it over. We'll thin down the tail on the other side as well. some ebony. That's good. Yeah, it's very symmetrical the way you've got the stri oh, striations, thank, eh? Thank you very you've much. You've done well. Oh, you've thank done you, Bob. Well. Thank you. <laughs> you've seen my, my course on balance. Obviously. Good day. Small Good day. Small people. So we've got a bit of a rough shape happening. Yeah, just, just yep. Say hi and I'll introduce you to... G'day, Michael. How are you? Welcome to the workshop again. See, I'm remembering. I'm remembering it's Michael. But I've got, I've got a friend of mine here, Gary Field. Uh, Master Woodcarver, he's coming to share some ideas and what we're going to be doing, with what we, shut up Bob, is, no, that's the wrong view that one, there you go, making that beautiful little whale tail out of some ebony. That's good, yeah, it's very symmetrical the way you've got the stri oh, striations, thank, eh? Thank you very you've much. You've done well. Oh, you've thank done you Bob. Well. Thank you. You've, you've seen my, my course on balance, obviously. Um, G'day Brad, how are you? Got a lot from Texas. Oh, there you go. We need a Zenith, Zenith camera. Um, I know, I, I, well, Zenith camera. I used to have a Zenith camera years ago. And then I got a Pentax. So what else is happening? Um, JB, I said good day. I think yeah. Uh, what I'm art? You haven't missed much. We've just started. Gary's sharing his expertise and doing some fine carving in ebony. Get up. Hey, Alan, are you at work? Are you skiving, mate? Welcome. Dear, oh dear. Now, this is just a quick one. We weren't going to stream it. We are going to do a video. And then I needed a countdown. And I found that when I hit the countdown button, guess what? I started streaming. So I don't know if we're going to finish all of this. But we'll, we'll um, give it a we, go. we will finish this. But whether or not we finish on the stream. But this will... You need a top view. Oh, mate, I've got a GoPro over the top. Hang on. I'm going to keep going. You've got to keep going. I'll keep going. He's going to keep going whilst I'm talking. Yeah, yeah. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's see. Let's just... Um, see, I can do this. Oh, Bob. Hang on, I've got to get Bob. Hello, Bob. Come on, move. The, 
How do you like that? Is that frightening, Gav? No. <laughs> Not in the slightest. There you go, look at that. Don't be buggered when I move in a minute. She's got to look after you blokes, look at that. Actually, I don't know what I'll do, I'll put the tripod up there. You can go back to that shot whilst I'm playing around. Mm -hmm. playing around the tripod. Bob's got expensive face, and even everything in here now. Yeah, we'll, we'll try this and see how, how this goes. Oh, yeah, by the time I get this done, you're going to be finished, aren't you? Hey, how's that for a shot? Look at that. Is it worth it? Oh, lovely. You just get the inside out so you don't see the thing on the top. Um, okay. So you do have to be a little careful with ebony. Don't rush it. I'm saying that, I hope I don't break it myself, but it's pretty tough stuff. But of course, on the end grain, on the tips of these, you might just need to so slow up a little bit. On? Is that a leather cushion, is it? That's just a little leather pad I made up, sand inside. And it just lets you be able to move it around without damaging anything. the other side and do a little bit of that as well. What's Bob doing down there? Let me come over here. Bob, you're a pest. You're a fat pest. Alan, 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 where can I... You get the bit from locally. You want some ebony, you can get it from me. Is that the bit you're talking about, Alan? Oh, sabre, oh, sabre tooth bits. Where do you get your sabre tooth bits for your dremel? Well, locally you can get them from David Drescher at South East Queensland. Woodworking supplies, or you can buy them online. There you go. Does that help, Alan? All right, you're going to leave your over, lose your overhead shot now. Yeah, that's all right. that second button from the top. Now, uh, over the other side, up, up. Next one over. Now, up from there. That's it! There you Look go. A sound engineer already. <laughs> now, I'll leave that up to you, Steve. Too technical for me.
swap, I swap over the tools quite often because, you, you know, obviously one shape will, won't do everything. This little project can be done with quite simple tools, as you can see. And also some homemade tools when I get to the final polishing and shaping. So that, that's not the first one you've made, is it? That one is the first one I made. Was it? That really? One, absolutely. First one. So Steve's gone out to check his charcoal. He's making some charcoal, burning some blue gum to make charcoal for his smithing. So he's just going to check it out. Doesn't want to let it burn out too much. So you've got me now flying solo for the first time, so. There's a couple little bits here. I'll probably change over to the Dremel in a minute and just do a couple more Dremel bits on it that I can't get into with the files. I could, but it's quicker just to Dremel them. So I might swap, a, swap the bit over and just do a little bit more Dremel shaping. Just change the shape a bit so I can get into those smaller areas. Steve, the charcoal burner's back. You don't want to make these little tips too thin because you don't want them to break off. But thin them down a little bit. So roughing out is just about complete with all this sort of uh, rougher stuff, so I'll go to some finer files in a minute. Just thin that down on the back a bit. Just 
bit chunky and thick on the back there. We're just trying to thin it down a little bit more, but not not too much. So we'll give it a bit, of, leave it a little bit of stability there. Starting to look all right. Well, that's my opinion. Steve might think otherwise. There we go. Sorry, I don't know my left or my right here. There we go. So, I'm trying to thin down the bottom of the tail. Well done, Steve. Something we didn't need, obviously. <laughs> oh, Looking all right, I think. Mm. It was my father's, it was probably his father's before that, so it's got to be well and true, truly, probably 100 years old. And here's the... Uh, we just sorry, do sorry. it off camera, hang on. <laughs> That's been in there for six months. Maybe I'm using the wrong method, I don't know. So, okay, what I'm going to do now is just slow it down a little bit. And start to use some finer files. Start off with this one. So I don't know how many folks watching are wood carvers, but there's no rush. I, I just slowly, eventually. If you're a wood you get stuff done. Ah, yeah, but you can. But what's the fun in round? You watching Theo? <laughs> Hi, Theo. I won't do that unless I have something supporting the ends of those tips because I don't want them to break off. Then I'll look like a real goose. So I bought a couple of um, problems that I've been having down to ask Steve's opinion and advice. I've been having trouble with some really old shellac, shellac flakes I've had from my father, which uh, is very, very old. So I didn't know whether it had gone off or whether I'm using the wrong spirit in it. So Steve's just off camera there shaking stuff and doing stuff. He's like a scientist over there, he is. Alchemist. Alchemist. Could possibly be. I'm going to 
another file to recourse a little finer. You have it too coarse, it'll just splinter out and bugger up the shape. bad. Let's see if I can get this in front of the camera again this time. Yep, there we go. Hold it still. Take it back a bit for focus. Yeah. It's looking okay. All right, we'll get this back on here. So I'm just going to use some sandpaper now. Just different, different grits of paper. Steve's deserted me. So I've just converted to a bit of sandpaper for those tips because I certainly don't want them to snap off and sometimes the uh, file is just a little bit too coarse. And we'll just rip it out. Much safer with a bit of sandpaper. Start off with about 100 grit paper. I work up to uh, 600 was the finish on that, this little finish piece. And just a coat of oil and a coat of wax. And it's enough to bring it up to a beautiful little sheen. What do you reckon, Steve? Get a jar of riddles with a down here. Oh, there you go. That's just Steve it's old man trying there. to find a jar. Isn't that nice? That's, that's it there. Oh, sensational. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful. Oh, that's a bit old. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Tell you what, they must be pretty tough grubs, eh? They have the titanium teeth. Oh, crikey. Lucky Bob wasn't underneath that. There we go, getting there. So this is the first time I've ever done one of these live streams. Um, so I'm not sure whether I'm meant to be talking a lot or what, but Normally when I demonstrate, I've got lots of people around me asking questions, so... Yeah, have you got hundreds of people, thousands of people? Oh, look, you? cast the thousands. G'day, Ray, how you going, mate? What else have we got? Only <laughs> with, because I'm from Australia and you seem to have an accent. Oh, OK. Oh, we've got a few on now. Living near Houston, but working in the main room. Not too far from here. Chinwag. You have a chin wag, Steve. I've got to, to stand close to Gary because he he has got the microphone. Um, what I'm doing here, Gary bought me some shellac down and 
I've got some new issue, eh? Like, and mine's been soaking for well over six months. I oh, know this so I'll just put in there. Just yeah. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Where are we up to? Oh, look at us. G'day, Brad. How are you? Who have we got? Where are we going? Alan. Um, have, you, have you ever used a cut? Well, I'm not going to say that. What is it? That one there. Cutsaw brand bird. Cutsaw. Cutsaw. Uh, yes, I have. Yes, he has. There you go. And Typhoon. Oh, there you go. They didn't blow apart. There you go. No, all good. Um, are we allowed to mention brands? <laughs> nice doggy. Yeah, if you stop eating, it'd be better. I'm going way, way back in the chat here. Alrighty. Nearly there to get some final polish happening on it. So you can actually polish this up to, you know, like something like 2000 grit and not have to oil it. It just comes up absolutely beautifully. 2000 grit? You want 2000? You want 2500? Oh, Steve, now you're challenging me. See? I, I seldom use 2500. I just me too. Stop at well, I've been stopping at 600. Honestly, by the time this? you get to 2000, you should be using the back of the paper. Exactly. Hey, Ray. Hey, any shape of wood after woodworking on it is fun. Good morning from the Netherlands. Old timey woodworker from the Netherlands. Lovely. See? You're Hello. now international, mate. I know. Yeah. Um. So we yes, are from Australia, yeah mate, we're from Australia. Dinky died, died in the wool Aussie. But apparently we can't say mate anymore if you're in Well the, I will be. In, in in the military and you can't say fair dinkum and no bull mechanical and ridgy did straight up and down. Because so the government reckons some people get offended. Oh, yeah, get well there you go. I, <laughs> I just watched your video on tips and tricks with uh, planes. I was just wondering, how would you rate Veritas Honing Guide? I use a Tormek. That might give you some indication. <laughs> um, oh, look, it's all right. And if you're going to use a hot stone, yeah, it works fine. But I personally, I prefer um, water stones, Tormek, which is there, or um, what else do I use? I've got a Robert Sorby linisher that I use sometimes, especially if I want to take a lot of stuff off a skew chisel or something for wood turning. But the, 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 the various just say work fine. It's just harder work, I suppose. But nothing wrong with it at all. They've got a good name too. I've got some various gear, I quite like it. Do you have, you have anything to do? How do you like sharp? Uh, I old school. I've got a Waterstone, I've got a mm. Tormek. But I like old school. I've got um, water stones. I've also got oil stones. But um, yeah, just slowly with the. I've got an old granite stone. Oh, Big okay. old piece of yeah. granite, and that's my favourite. And then lots of stropping. Heaps of stropping. Yeah, didn't need to use wood carving chisels on this because it's a small project. Ebony's hard. You still can carve it with Speaking pictures. Of small I'm going to show you this. Gary made this for me. It is just, it's, it's just the nattiest thing. Where are they? Side view, side view, side view. There you go. Look, look at that. Isn't it beautiful? It's blackwood, figured blackwood, and it goes like that. And you think it's on a gravity hinge because it works so well, but it's not. It's two magnets. How cool is that? I reckon it's... So thanks, mate. There you go. I like that. You're welcome. I like that. You come down and show us how to make one of those one day, if you like. Could do. I'd sit in the audience. I'll go out in the house and watch you on... on uh, Will you? Yeah, I'll watch you on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> now, then you'll tell me what I'm doing wrong. No, Not I'm presenting not myself to the public. To the... Ah, right. That's all new stuff to me. <clears throat> what have we got? Uh, here we go. I used to go freehand until I worked out. 
<coughs> that much nicer it is if you get an exact angle, I think. Anyway, use concrete, use whatever, just to get an edge. The sharper the tool is, the more enjoyable the woodworking is. <coughs> I think we're nearly there, Steve. We've got a couple more grits to go, and I think we're nearly there. Looking nice. I'll be editing this one so you see a totally different edited version of what you're getting on the screen. If you can hear me on the microphone, I don't know how far that carries. Well, I don't know. How much of a much now? Mm. So what did you do, Steve? I used DAA. Uh, English, please. You nurtured absolute alcohol. Um, I used metho. Metho is 95% ethanol. DAA right. is 99.7% ethanol. Right, so you just got that. And it's just got that bit that took you over the edge. Ah, it might be where I'm going wrong then. Yeah, I've, um, I've just ordered 100 litres. I was going to have a 60 litre drum over there. But, um, This is 320 grit, I'm down to now, um, coming up quite nicely. So what I also do when I get to this point, when I've got the shape right, I'm happy with it, I'll actually start wet sanding it. Don't have to use wet and dry paper, I use, use um, Velcro, Velcro back paper. But if I can ask Steve for a bit of water, is that water Steve in there? Yeah. Oh, no, that's glue. That's glue. We won't use that. In the squirt bottle. Squirting. Right. Yeah, we'll just no, have I'm a little bit of water. Up, Pretty old. I just, I just squeezed it and it just powdered. Just squeeze the stuff and see what happens. Oh, that'll leave it in there for a bit. Yeah. Normally if it goes green, it's not real good. And that has got a green tinge to it, but... Yeah, man. Well, my dad's, dad's been gone for over 30 years and, and uh, he would have had it for years and years, so I'd say it's pretty old. Ancient beetles. What a great way to spend the day down here with Steve. It <laughs> took a few hours to get in the shed, didn't it? Oh, well, look, it's all part of the fun. Oh, the fire's going well now, she's smoking. Excellent. Good. I'll leave that soak overnight and I'll give you a buzz tomorrow. Alrighty. Alright, so here we go. We'll wipe off a bit of this water. Yeah, let's go. Well, can so you can show them up close on that cam over there. So, how are we going? Oh, actually, no, use this one. Yeah, over here, use right. Go to the left, go to the right. Yeah, oh, you're getting me so bloody confused. On, Whoa. Get there we go. Oh. There we go, there we go. So, as you can see, it's got a little bit of a... I'll get my fingers out of the way there and you can see it. A little bit of... Oh, God. You'd think I'd be all right at this. There you go, a little bit of... Maybe I'll give it to Steve, he can manipulate Hang on, it. I'll hold it. Here we go, here we go, here we right. go. Oh, sort of. There we go. Yeah, this, as I said, it's a little tiny project, but there's no reason why you couldn't do a bigger whale tail and make it a little sculpture. Just spotted something I'm not I want to change, so a little bit more detailing there. That's the um, Steve, please help bucket. <laughs> bucket. Got a project coming up soon with, with special effects wax. Mm -hmm. There you go. What is it? No, we'll do it on this one. What? Green. It, it makes the timber look like um, copper. It really is. 
But play with a bit of ebony gather with bone. Mm, ebony? No, I used... Uh, um, no, and boy, you there, there, there it is there. And then I scraped a bit off and just left it in the... Yeah, so yeah. It's a really oldy patina. It's like... Uh, what is it? Tarnished copper. Tarnished copper, there, yeah, that's it. Oh, that's your, that's your vinegar, that's your ebonite. But look at the colour of it, though. It's, so uh, it is here. Yeah, well, I've got one down here. Yeah. Oh. So a little bit more water and a little bit more 320 grit. Well, that's, that's mine. Yeah, mine doesn't go that colour. It just looks like rust. Oh, yep. But I noticed on one of your live streams that you had... You, le you put your uh, wire wool in and then you leave it, you take it out and let the air get to it, don't you? So yeah, my, well, mine well, hasn't I, had air. I, I take the top off and it relieves the pressure in the stink. Oh, she's a bit pinky inky. That's had two steel wool pads put in it and mm. this one, I don't know, it might have had more, it's nicer. Hmm. That one's just... Oops. But where, where's a bit of timber? You'd think I'd have a bit around here, wouldn't Got a hairdryer down here or a heat gun, Steve? Yep. Picked up the wrong one. So uh, just drying off the water a bit. You can see it changing colour there. The reason I'm doing that now is the grain's been raised up. I'll give it another little cut back with, I'll use some of Steve's uh, 1400, is it? Let it dry and then I'll just put a coat of wax on it and you can see how beautiful this ebony is. If I kept going, just with wet and dry, probably wouldn't even need to put a finish on this, but. For purposes of speed. There's a couple of little scratches in there. I'll just try and get them out a bit. No, just a bit of paper. You can actually scrape this with a knife too. I use a pocket knife on it. it scraping it is uh, really quite easy. I might just use one of my diamond files here if I can find it. Just help me get that little scratch out of there. So you can just wrap a bit of paper around whatever file you're using.
It's better that it's got rid of those little scratches now. About done. You could actually make that a little sculpture there, Steve. You could just sit that on top of something like so. You could. Sit that on there. Might even do that. Why don't we do that? We turn this into a nice little. What do you want for the base? Whatever you got. Well, let's just find my white pencil, which is hidden here under all this crap. Let's move some of it. Oh, well, white pencil will have to be replaced by a green pencil. I was going to cut this off and turn it into a pendant, but I've changed my mind now, so I'm just going to... What do you want? A square? Just a little... Something to sit that on. Yeah, a little rectangular piece would be nice. Rosewood. Sure does. Ah, that'll be perfect. Just make a little irregular shape on the top of this. Make it look like the ocean. How am I going there, Steve? All right. Yeah, good, What have you got there? Oh, beautiful. What's that? I keep coming in the shop when I go over the store.
<laughs> well, if you've got an aching tooth, I might be able to fix it. Actually, it says it on the box, doesn't it? This is not a dental tool. This is not a dental tool, tool. yeah. I saw a trimmer, a rabber, and it had that on oh. there. Oh yeah, you can sit on that one. Just to give it a bit of contrast between the polish and the and the ocean. The polished whale, it's smooth, rough ocean. Meh. Tip it that way a bit. Not the other way. Might be able to see me carve on that bit there. Detail this a tiny bit more, and then I think we're done.
the most quiet I've ever been on the street. I can understand <laughs> that. People probably think I'm boring. Jeez, he doesn't talk much. Strength, his legs over there, and I was giving each other heaps. <laughs> oh, you know me, Steve. Don't, don't say a lot. Here we go. What do you reckon? What do you reckon? What do you reckon? Give us a look. I'm going to put a bit of uh, wax on it, and it should look like pretty bloody good, I reckon. It is, we'll give him a shot, but there it is, it's, it's good, isn't it? Come up. All right, we can set it on a little base. I oh, know you can, you can manipulate it to the camera. And yet they've got to push the button, Stephen. A bit slow, this bloke, I tell you. Go yeah, that way. There you go. So, so there, we're going to put some wax on it in a tick. And I've got to go up here and do it because. The video camera, the video will be on a different camera to what you guys are watching. Well, if you want, you can watch. There you go. So that was it. We're starting out. We're going to do a necklace. We, Gary, was going to do a necklace. And then ended up making a little sculpture. Where's the necklace one? Yeah, floating around with them. There you go. So you can either have it. Wait until we get in focus. Come on, get in focus. <laughs> Gonna be playing one of those games today. There you go. So you can either have it as a piece of jewellery and a pendant, or you can turn it into a little desk sculpture or objet art. Objet art. Objet art, yeah, isn't it nice? So there you go. I'm gonna put a bit of uh, wax on it now. Yep. And watch the difference when you get the wax on it. I will just get a little bit of. Keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that. Where are we? There we go. All right, just tell us what you're doing. Uh, just taking the little burrs off the stippling. Meant to look like an ocean. Don't want too many bits of crap floating around on top of it. Flotsam and jetsam. Flotsam and jetsam. That's jets. what they call it, yep. You know the difference between the two? No. Flotsam is naturally occurring and jetsam is stuff that's been jettisoned over the side oh, of the boat. Oh, jeez. Just a wealth of full information. Full of knowledge. You full can knowledge. plummet the depth of despair with me. <laughs> or the depth of the ocean as it was. Yeah, or the depth of something else. There we go. Well, for a little quickie, I reckon that's okay. Mount it on a little plinthy thing. I'll get some. I'll get some wax. Where's my wax? You want to use your wax? No, no. What? what no, 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 no. Yep. Oh, I will do it with a little dowel later. Yeah, no. So it sits there properly. In the interim, in the interim. In the interim, okay. Well, in the interim, I'm going to put a little bit of wax on it. Don't need a lot. Just a little paste wax. A little soft wax. Yeah, I'll finish with that, mate. Hang on, you're going to have to do that again because. That's all right, I'm still doing that's it. That's the wrong camera. Right. Wait a minute. No, you've got to wait until this kicks in again. There we go. Okay, here we go. Just a bit of soft wax on it. Poke it into the little holes there. This is a cracking bit of ebony.
There we go. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's I'll, right. be, I'll be finished by the time you find it. Yeah, no, don't be like that. <laughs> well, these are nice little... Nice little rainy Friday sculptural piece. There we go. Look at that. I finally got it figured out. Sort of. Did you wax the bottom? No, because oh, we, we might glue it. We might glue it. We might. We might. Okay. Have you ever used this stuff? I have used that stuff. Oh, for some stuff. Sailmakers, apparently. Oh, sailmakers, right. Yeah, from, from Japan. Beautiful. Um, I might just... What, what are you going to... Put it on that burr or oh, burr or well, we'll rosary? Yeah, it's a bit small. Oh, I'm going to uh, make a bigger bit. The burr might look nice, yeah. Oh, I'll just run a hand plane over that. We'll just Beautiful. I'll just wait. I'll just polish this up a bit oh, while we're oh, waiting. So. Awesome. You're doing that. I'll just quickly whack it. We make a pretty good and team, hey? We do, yeah. yeah. We could knock out a couple of hundred of these. And... <laughs> oh, actually, no, I need to be up there. Let me get a, let me get a hand plane. It's Lamborghini. So there we go. One little coat of wax and it's come up pretty nice. Probably could have spent a little bit more time detailing that bottom, but turn it over. Looks pretty nice. Steve's just making a little base we could sit it on. So it could be just a little desktop thing. Geez, that'd be a bugger, wouldn't it? Yeah. You wouldn't be able to talk. Wouldn't be able to lick the bottom of the ice cream dish, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful, Steve. Make a sculptor out of here. Look at that, look at that. Where's, where's a bit of something? Oil. Bit of, bit of oil, bit of wax. Bit of wax, bit of wax. Bit of waxy, let's use no, it. No, I'll come, I'll, I'll come in on the back end. Let's use yes, ooh, 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 ooh. Let's just try and use this one, eh? A like bit of Libron. A bit of Libron. We just screwdrivers, Steve. There you go. Whack a bit of that on it. Oh, it smells alright too. It does, doesn't it? Just got to cut the daggy bit off. Got to make it look nice. God, isn't that? that one look nice up there. It would. Doesn't too late. Sorry. Look at that, he's stylizing it as well. Look at that, over the shore. Very nice. Very nice. Just need a little. There we go. There we go. Finished. Done, 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 done. And, well, yeah, there you go. 
I could smooth that out, which I should do with a you plane. Will. We can I'll, do that. I won't do it now. Yes, I will. No, I won't. No, I'll do it. I'll do it wrong. But that's it. A little yeah. whale tail. There we go. On a coral reef. See, it's it's Very good. Oh, it's look, I'm, I'm waxing lyrical here. A waxing lyrical. It's got wax on it. Too. Beautiful. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to edit that fun. video and you won't see the shots you saw in the stream. You'll see much closer shots. But who have we got? Uh, only one, Drew, but my idol was number one off eBay. Oh, I'm halfway through a conversation there. Um... Uh, only did you find number one. I've been trying. Oh, I've got a number one. There you go. There you go. You seen the Stanley number one before? No, I haven't. Oh, there you oh, go. Oh, my goodness. What a bubba. There you go. There you go. That shouldn't be a load away from Stanley number one. I used to use until I found out how much they're worth. <laughs> should not be allowed away from its mother. Oh, look, this world is telling me. Beautiful, isn't it? Granddad out for a ride. Granddad out for a ride. Number eight on there. Number eight. Number there we go. Look at that. There you go. Number one on the back of a number eight. Fantastic. Now, I know they, 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 they're not true Stanleys. I've got a number eight Stanley over there, but I'm not going to get it. This is a Lee Nielsen number eight. Oh, it's nice to... It's two pounds Beautiful. Heavier. Beautiful. Stanley one. Lovely. Gorgeous thing. There you go. So you just keep looking around. They pop up. But be careful because some people make fake ones. They look like number ones, but they're not. Um, yeah, you can buy, I think, is it Superior Tools make a number one? Lee Nelson makes a number one. Um, I think there might be someone else that does a number one as well, but that's Fair Dink and Stanley number one. It's, about, it's not that old. It's about 1935, 1940, something like that. They stopped making them in about 1942, I think. So I'm sorry if I came in halfway on that conversation. Um, what about a five and a quarter only wood? Have you got a five and a quarter? A lot of people say they've got a full set of plates, but they don't have a five and a quarter. Whoops. That's a five and a quarter there. It actually is the width of a number three, and it's longer than a number four, but not as long as a number five. And on the back there, you can see... Five and one quarter. There you go. They used to be called Junior Jacks. Ah, and the they Jack. were the popular plane for school when I went to school. Mm. But now schools are using five and a halves. This is an Australian one. This is a Turner. So I did want a full set of these. Oh, they're beautiful. Look at the red handles. Yeah, lovely. Isn't it? Yeah. Good old Aussie ingenuity. There you go. So look out for, I'd seen one five and a quarter corrugated sole and I was going to buy it and I thought, why well, I don't like corrugated planes, so I didn't. Uh, what have we got? The couple of them, they are available. I just don't expect to pay less. They said, well, I think if you get one for a grand, you're doing well now, Ray. Um, okay, guys, 12.30 in the morning. Hey, Fire Inspector, I appreciate the fact you stayed up so long to watch two old people. Play around on the right the afternoon in the workshop. <laughs> uh, dear Samuel, hi from Texas. Actually, that, that bit of wood that that is on, that came from Texas, but not Texas in America. It was Texas in Australia. Population of about 632 people. I, think. I want to get out there again. I like going out there. It's just me and the kangaroos, the occasional wild pig and emus. That's it. So that's it. I will uh, edit go. that and we'll put it up. So, did you enjoy the experience? I had, yep, great fun. Good it, fun. It was first good. time. I'm it a was, first timer. There you go. Good fun. Broken in. On this is your Sunshine Coast screaming, here we come. Here we come. So that's it. This is uh, First of all, I've got to say thanks, mate, for coming in. Welcome, I Steve. I appreciate that. We'll Enjoyed make a video it. and it'll go up on... You want a copy on your website? Why not? Why not, indeed. And it'll go up on the YouTube channel. As I said before, if you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button and whack the notification bell so you know what I'm on. I should be doing Mondays, which is Sunday night if you're north of the equator. And if you'd like to join and get some extra benefits from the Woodworking Masterclass channel, hit the join button. And if you're wondering what those little circles are, they're actually saw blades and they're people that are members of the channel and they're different colours for as long as you've been involved. And I thank you, all the members, very much. I appreciate your commitment and your patience. 
whilst I get more videos done. Uh, people, if you're watching and you haven't joined in the chat room, next time I'm on, hop in. We're all nice and friendly. We don't bite hard. Um, you got any questions, woodwork related, by all means ask and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, thanks for any mods that are on. Alan, I know you're on. Um, John, didn't see you, but any... Ray, you're on. All the other mods that looked after the channel, thank you for keeping it clean and up to date and me on target. So I hope to see you on Monday. In fact, I will. I'll make a commitment. I will stream on Monday Australia time, which is Sunday night in the US or Canada or Sweden or wherever you be. Um, and we'll get on with some more box making. I've just been approached to do another TV show in Sydney. So I might get back into more furniture, getting away from boxes. And I will stream as I'm actually making TV shows. So I'll see how that goes. It's going to be interesting. But in the meantime, this is Steve and Gary saying remember Goodbye. to keep it sharp. More importantly, keep it safe. And I look forward to having your company in the workshop at the bench very, very soon. Till then, be kind to each other. Look after yourself. God bless. Uru. Goodbye. Catch you later. See you later. Bye. Thank you.